while you're still standing, if you would please turn with me to the book of St. Luke. St. Luke chapter 4, where I'll read from verses 1 to verse 13. Of course, from the New King James Version. St. Luke chapter 4, 1 to 13 says, Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And just a word of note, please remember as I read, please listen. Just, just, don't just listen casually. Listen intently to the Word of God. Listen to what the text is saying. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for 40 days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word of god then the devil taking him up on a high mountain showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said to him all this authority i will give you and their glory for this has been delivered to me and i will give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship me, worship before me, all will be yours. <laughs> and Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him if you are the son of god throw yourself down from here for it is written he shall give his angel charge over you to keep you and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone <laughs> and jesus answered and said to him it is has been said you shall not tempt the lord your god Verse 13, now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. And we say amen to God's word. Amen. You may be seated, you may be seated. I want to use for a topic today, start strong. Start strong. I'm not customarily a uh, talk to your neighbor preacher, but today I'll make an, uh, 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 an exception. Would you please tell your neighbor, start strong. Start strong. And after you told your neighbor, please tell yourself, start strong. What an opportunity to reset, realign, and reposition ourselves with the will of god the start of a new year brings just that yes a chance to start anew this may be a recurring desire each year for you but why not set this year apart from all the other years before it is the perfect time to press the reset button and Start strong. Some of you have made a mess of last year. But you can start again. Mistakes have, have been made last year. But you can start again. Regrets plague your mind. But you can start again. Don't count yourself out. You are still in the fight. It's not over. Win this round by starting strong. 
let us identify what we are up against and fight. First John 2, first John 2 verses 15 to 17 says from the New King James. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Verse 17. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. John describes to us what we are up against, what we need to fight, and what is fighting us. And all of us, if we confess, truly all of us to one dimension or another, has been or is being affected by these three sins. As you know, there are only three sins. The loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of of life what a fight what a battle we can pretend as much as we want but all of us are in this fight for our lives as we begin we look to our main text for some reassurance again Luke 4 1 to 13 the main character of the Bible is the main character in this passage in particular that we read Jesus is introduced at the beginning of his earthly ministry. Back in chapter 3, we find him at age 30, roughly age 30. He has come to John to be baptized by him in the Jordan River. And as he came to John, initially he objected, uh, John objected. But Jesus says, allow it, suffer to be so now. Allow, suffer, allow, suffer means allow. He says, allow it to be so now as we should fulfill all righteousness. And so he baptized Jesus. Not because he was a sinner, but because he was identifying with those who he was going to save. He's beginning his earthly ministry. And as he was baptized and praying to the Father, the, and he comes up out of the water, the heavens opened up. The voice comes from heaven. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The Holy Spirit of God coming down in the form or fashion of a dove. And came upon him and rested and stayed upon him. As a man now because he's coming as a man. The Holy Spirit fills him because he's getting ready to go into the mission of his ministry. And so in that very instant. We see the triune God being visible. God the Father speaking, the Holy Spirit um, coming upon him, and Jesus himself, the triune God. Jesus now gets ready to move forward as the Holy Spirit empowers him, and the Father confirmed him. No armed with his identity, he stepped forward into his ministry. Again, verse 1 and 2 of um, chapter 4 says then Jesus being filled with the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness being tempted 40 days by the devil in those days he ate nothing and afterward when they had ended he was hungry he was hungry he was about to face and pass the test that others before him had failed you must understand that all of scripture is actually one story. Like a thread in a knitted garment. To pull on one end is to create movement in another end. All of scripture is one seamless story. And here we find Jesus at the start of his ministry. But to understand why is he at this point. I'm taking on this responsibility. Being led by the spirit to be tempted for 40 days. You must look back to Genesis. In Genesis chapter 3. Where um, Satan showed up to tempt Eve. And asked her had God said you shouldn't eat of every tree of the garden. 
And Eve replied to him and said him straight, said, no, God said, we shouldn't eat of any, we can eat of all the trees except this one. And like a liar does, he lies through his teeth. And said, you will not surely die. But God knows if you eat of it, you're going to be like God, knowing good and evil, twisting the truth, because that was the truth being twisted. The setup. And the story goes on to tell us in Genesis that when she looked at it, lust. She looked and realized it was good for food, the lust of the flesh. It was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes. And it was a fruit to make one wise pride. She took of the fruit and ate of it and gave to her husband. So she pointed to him how good it look, how good it will make her feel, and how good it will, how good of a position it will, it will place them in. And he ate also. And everything went downhill from then. And been going downhill. And so they were cast out of the garden into a dry place. Because in the garden it was luscious and fruitful. But now he's cast out. Now he has to work hard in a dry place. To do anything. To accomplish anything. By the sweat of your brow you're going to be able to eat working hard. So here comes Jesus now and he's pushed into the wilderness. He's starting where the first Adam messed up and left off. So Adam was cast out of the garden into the wilderness. Notice Jesus is started in the wilderness and he's going to end up in the garden where he would, but that's for a different time. Because he comes now to undo what Adam did. Likewise, after Adam, God will call the nation of Israel, but they too would fail in, the, in the, going through the wilderness. They refused to believe God about the promised land that he promised them. And when they doubted that God would give them the land, after they looked at it for 40 days, God would cause them to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. One day, one year for each day they sought and, 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 and checked out the land. And so while Adam failed and Israel failed, no, three is a charm. Here comes this Jesus who is now our new representative. Truth be told, if he fail, it's game over. So he comes into the wilderness that Adam was left in. He comes and he's there uh, fasting for 40 days uh, uh, to, to, for, for the 40, 40 years of Israel in the wilderness. And here we find him and he's there for 40 days and fasting. And now the Bible said he was hungry. He was hungry. You, 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 you can just imagine uh, um, those of you who have not, not had for two days how hungry you got. And for young people, those of you who haven't had for half an hour, I'm starving. Have you ever heard them? They didn't eat for a half an hour. And there's, you don't know starving, girlfriend. My man, you don't know starving. You don't know hungry yet. So for 40 days, he ate nothing. So now he's hungry. And so we find our oh, first test, the loss of the flesh now. Satan shows up in verse 3. And then the devil said to him, if you are the son of God. Command this stone to become bread. He appeals to the desire. First he targets his identity. And then he also targets his desire. That's what the devil does. The devil targets us where we are vulnerable. You must understand back in chapter 3. The heavens had just opened up. And God had confirmed who Jesus is. You are my beloved son. And I'm pleased with you. Satan comes up, are you really? Since you are, if you are, then targeting his identity. He knows he's hungry, so he targets his, the, the desires also. You know how he does. You never thought about stealing, but now you're broke. You never thought about going out to do immoral things, but now passions are rising up in you and he has a way of setting you up he has the right words to say mr slick hello baby you know how they get 
in the low tone and have the light, n- n- nice words and have the car outside. And you don't even know it is his cousin's car. He's just trying to play you, girl. She's just trying to play you, bro. Because the enemy has a way of setting you up. So, if you are the son of God, turn this stone into bread. Fix the problem yourself. You've been so hungry. Don't listen to anybody you hear. Just do it. God will forgive you. Just, it's just going to be one time. And now you can't move out. It's just going to be one time. And one turn into two. Two turn into three. Four, five, twenty. One and twenty. Two and twenty. And stop counting. But how, how did Jesus respond when this temptation came raging upon him? Verse 4 gives us the answer. But Jesus answered and him saying, It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, by, but by every word of God. Take that devil. You see, when he approaches you with lie, you respond with truth. The truth is, man shall not live by bread alone. I know I'm hungry, I know I'm thirsting, but God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I know passions are rising, but if I do that, it's going to hurt me more deeply. God give me the grace to be sustained, to keep myself. I'm still single. I have desires, but God, you are a keeper. And for those of you who think only singles have problems because they're married people who have problems also. So don't think marriage, marriage is a savior. No, it's not. Trust me. And so all of us, no matter who we are, where we are, ought to be armed like Jesus armed himself with the truth of God's word. One of the excuses that husband made, well, when my wife is this and my wife is that. And so I got to go help myself. That's your problem. You're trying to help yourself. You should make God help you. Well, my husband is this and my husband is that and he's not too well and he's always busy working. No excuse. So girlfriend got to do what girlfriend got to do. No, 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 no. The truth of God's word still remains. So Jesus, as our example now, says, say that, no, 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 it is written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I had to go King James, I'm sorry. It's just in my brain. The truth. It's your greatest defense against the devil's temptation is not to rebuke, bind, or plead the blood. Whatever that means, I'm still trying to figure it out. Sorry, I had to go there and mess with some of you, but I'll leave it alone. It is the truth of God's word that stops the devil in his tracks, not gimmicks. If we spend more time in the word of God, we could cut out some of these foolish gimmicks that we do in our churches. That's what I call them. I want to stay on point because you don't want to get me all started. Because some of the things we see us do, especially us Pentecostal, there's some of the things I, I, but let me leave it alone. Let's just keep our focus on the word of God. Only truth can stop lies. And I'd rather follow Jesus than follow the examples of men. Secondly, second test, the second test, verse 5 to 7 says, then the devil take it. So that, that didn't work. <laughs> so he tried something else. <laughs> then the devil taking him up on a high mountain. Showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him. Listen to this. You, you have to listen to this. The devil said to him. All this authority I will give you. Wait a minute. Who is speaking here? This is the devil speaking here, right? I just want to make sure. All this authority I will give to you and the glory 
For this has been delivered to me. When? Listen. And I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Really now? So you're telling me, you have all power, you have all authority, and all these are yours. It just remind me, I've got to go there. <laughs> Some of you never heard this, so I'm going to have to share this one with you. <laughs> there was this guy who was checking for this girl. And because he wanted to show off how that he's, you know, all that and so much more. Like he was a Gigi, a girl's guy. He took her up on a hill to overlook the valley below where there are lots of apartment buildings and houses. And he did like this, all these are mine. And she was, oh, just like that, oh. That had her. And to keep this G, you know what happened next. She was gone. She was smitten, really. So after some time passed, he didn't come to visit her anymore. She called him up. He said, why you just leave me like that? And after all the things you got, you won't even help me out. He said, listen, when I said all these are mine, I mean my five fingers. All these are mine. And the rings I have on them. Because that's what liars do. They blow up the lie to impress you. And so the devil comes and he's making this bold proclamation to Jesus. Listen, who is speaking to whom and what he's saying, people of God. So he made this bold. Maybe it apparently, apparently, apparently the devil did not remember Psalm 24 and verse 1. Apparently, Satan did not remember Psalm 24 and verse 1. What does Psalm 24 and verse 1 say? Uh, I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. New Living Translation. The world and all its people belong to him. I read through that verse. I see nothing belonging to Satan. Or maybe he hadn't read Colossians 1, 15 to 17. From the New Living Translation. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created. And, and is supreme over all creation. For through him God created everything. In heaven, in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things that we see and the things we can't see. Such as thrones and kingdoms, rulers and authorities in the unseen world. Everything, wait a minute. Everything was created through him and for him. I still haven't seen anything for the devil yet. Let me read on, see if we find anything. Verse 17 says, he existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. I don't know about you, but I read through just these two verses and I saw nothing belonging to the devil. And so he comes lying to Jesus just as he lies to us. You don't have to wait on God. I can give you. You don't have to trust God. I got this. I'll help you. Yeah, like help me to the grave. Like helping my, my soul to be pierced. You want to help me to make me sick. You want to help me to fall into regrets. So, come on somebody. Because at, it looked good. It sounded good. And, I, and still he run for good. And left you alone in it. And now you got to deal with the mess. Some of you are still picking up the pieces. Talk to me somebody. And now you say, if I had known... But that's what liars do. They lie. So Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is going to handle him anyway. You see, if we allow the devil to make us think we are less than who we really are, we will believe his lies and he will offer us something inferior to what God promised us. See, God, God the Father confirmed Jesus' identity. And Jesus confirms our 
identity through the, the written word of God. Why? Because we belong to him. We need to know who we are, people of God, who we are in God. Romans 8, 15 to 17 says, because this is where the enemy attacks us initially, our identity, who we are. Romans 8, verse 15 to 17 says from the New Living Translation, so you have been, sorry, so you have received, so you have not received rather, a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. No, we call him Abba, Aramaic for father, Abba, father. For his spirit joined with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his hearers. In fact, together with Christ, we are hearers of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. So what the enemy pro uh, um, promises us is smooth sailing. And it leads to death. Broad is a road that leads to destruction. But narrow is a road that leads to life and only a few find it. And so because God leads us through difficulties and challenges, not knowing that he's leading us into life, we listen to the lies and the promises of the enemy. And some of us are paying the bill right now. So I pray that this first Sunday of this year will be the year you press the reset button. And tell the devil, hit the road, Jack. And don't you come back. No more. No more, no more. I'm resetting the button on you. You lied to me enough. I have enough scars to prove the lies you told were lies. I'm going to choose to believe God. It may be hard, but I'm going to believe God. I may have to be single a little while longer, but I'm going to wait upon God. I may have to do with all for a little while more, but I'm going to wait upon God. Because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Waiting is not easy, but waiting is the best thing to do, people of God. Yes. And so, so the devil tries, he tries to attack Jesus' identity and offered him something he already owned. <laughs> but Jesus had his number. Jesus had the devil's number. Verse, verse 8 says, verse 8 says, And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan. For it is written, the truth is, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only, you, only you shall serve. Oh God. Jesus was actually quoting from Deuteronomy 6.13 to be exact. So first, he attacked his flesh. Then he attacks his eyes now, showing him things to get his eyes, to get his attention. You know how the devil works. He uses things to get our attention. That's why you've got to be careful of what you look at. Be careful of what you're putting into your eyes, the windows to the soul. You've got to make sure your, your, your warning lights work because sometimes it starts out innocent and then it gradually builds. It gradually builds and before you know it, you're way out in the deep and you can't even wade in the waters. And all you ought to do is cry for help. But I want to let you know that the lifeguard is on duty. His name is Jesus. And no matter how far, far gone you think you are, he can swim well. As a matter of fact, he won't even swim. He just walk on the water and get to where you are and pull you up. Has anybody ever been pulled up after you were sinking deep? You, you messed up big times. Believe the lie. But Jesus came to your rescue. If he did it before, thanks be to God, he can do it again. Oh God. And so thirdly, thirdly, the third test, the pride of life, verse 9 to 11. Then he brought him to Jerusalem 
set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, if you are the son of God, you see, notice he consistently targeted his identity. If you are the son of God, right? if, 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 if you are the son of God, throw yourself down from here. He, look at Satan now quoting scripture. <laughs> It's amazing how people will twist the scripture to suit themselves. Husbands, the Bible says to your wife, the Bible says, submit to your husband. But be a husband so she'll submit to you. No, she's supposed to, but be a husband who she will love to submit to. And stop beating your wives over their head with the scriptures. And wives, stop twisting it for yourself. If you would be the husband that I can submit to, I would submit to. No, no, that's not what it says. You should submit to your husband, period. With wisdom, yes, but period. Not if he's teaching you to do wrong. But this is how selfish we all are. Twisting scriptures, just like the devil, to suit ourselves. Yes. So the the devil starts quoting scriptures now. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And in their hands, he missed out a part in her. Because it's supposed to say, in his ways. That means according to God's will. But he intentionally left out that part. That whatever you do must be according to God's will. But he left that part out and he jumps to. In their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said, all right. So you want to do a round of scripture. I got scripture for you. And Jesus answered and said to him, it has been said, or it is written, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. Take that devil. You see, we must know the difference between faith and presumptuousness, people of God. Hear this, hear this part, because some of you need to hear this. Christians need to know the difference between faith and presumptuousness, which is pride. Faith does not mean that we throw common sense out the window. Let me let that simmer a little bit. Do not let the enemy deceive you and set you up to die. In, while the children of Israel were going through the wilderness and God instructed them to search out the land and he's going to give them the land they didn't believe, Joshua and Caleb spoke up. And after that, they spoke up and God spoke to Moses to let them know how he was going to punish them in the wilderness. How they were going to die off. The, those who were 20 and over, were going, only those who were 20 and under were going to remain. They said to them, said, okay, 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 okay. We're going to go up now. Got their weapons and ready to go. Moses said, don't go. The Lord is not with you. You already disobeyed. He already left you. Chill. But they said, no, we going up. They went up to face the enemy. Long story short, they whooped them and sent them back. Moses said, didn't I tell you? You were being presumptuous. If God said, don't go, don't go. You can't impose upon the presence of God. If he's not going, sit down and wait. Wisdom, people of God. Jeremiah, in the time of Jeremiah, Jeremiah said, listen, you guys have disobeyed God. God's going to punish you for 70 years. You're going to be carried away in Babylon. He said to uh, um, Zedekiah, Zedekiah, listen, when the king of Babylon come, submit to him because this is what's going to happen. You're just going to have to pay the price. You're going to have to go through this. Zedekiah allow these false prophet to prophesy well this is God's house this is God's land and he will not let anything bad happen to us with his bad self rallies his army when the king of Babylon come and he saw that they were going to be destroyed he ran for his life the king of Babylon caught up with him killed his children and and put out his eyes the guy could have had his family together his eyes and survive But he was presumptuous. Listen to people who's always speaking blessings. Oh, this is going to be a blessed year. This is going to be the year. This is God. God is going to bless you. Don't. No, what if this is the year God choose to really test you? To really prove you? 
because he want to fashion you into whom he called you to be. What if this is it? I don't care if 2021 is worse than 2020. Just as long as I'm in the will of God. That's all I want. I, I don't care. I, I, I pray it doesn't. But if it does, so what? If God is still God. Because it cannot be worse unless God allows it. And if God allows it to be worse, I'm going to sail in this ship. And just so you know. If it takes me out, I'm going to be with Jesus. Don't pray for me to come back. Do not pray for me to be raised from the dead. As long as it's flatlined and it's confirmed, leave me alone. God will comfort her. Because I'm saying all this because, listen, we need to know the difference between presumptuous and faith. You see, I listen to what some Christians call faith, but they're acting foolish. I listen to you. You need to wear your mask. I know you're covered. Wear your mask. Let me let that simmer a little bit. Because I know some of you, so Holy Ghost feel nothing can go wrong with you. Because you're so presumptuous. And you don't even realize you and talking is faith. No, it's not faith. It's foolish. This thing is real, people of God. People are dying, people of God. Follow precautions. Don't panic. I don't want you to panic and stop living. But by God, be wise. What's wrong with you? I'm a child of God. I'm under the blood. You need a... Cut it out. It's foolish. And if you keep going, I'm going to sing, shall we gather at the river for you? Yes, you're calling on, no, no, no. I'm calling you to sense, common sense. Be wise, people of God. Notice how Jesus approached Satan. This is God himself. And notice Jesus is following what God the Father said. Jesus could have just stepped on this boy's head. And just finish it off. No, but God had a purpose for taking him through. And that's our problem. We want God to remove everything. No, no. There's something we're going to have to go through. Because purpose must prevail. But we want God to fix everything. And we want the virus to... No, no. It's not time for it to go yet. Really. Because we haven't learned yet. We still think it's Pfizer that's going to save us. No, 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 no. It's God who's going to save us. And let me say this too. Let me say this. Those of you who are stressing about taking the, the, um, the, the, um, the vaccine, if it needs be, take it. I don't plan to. But if it needs be. <laughs> but if I need to, I will. Whatever the wise thing is, that's what I'm going to do. Not my, not, not my personal preference. So far, I don't plan to, but if God can change my mind, and if he change my mind, hello. <laughs> because wisdom supersedes foolishness. So I'm not against it because I'm just covered under the blood. I'm against it because I just don't know what's in it yet. So if the motives are correct, people of God, God will protect you. But don't be discouraging people from taking it, please, people of God. Let's pray for God's wisdom and direction. Christian ought to be wise. We need to stop making the world point the finger at us and think we are stupid, that we are foolish, that we can't think intelligently. Let me just, let me just, let me just try to do this. Oh my God, you guys got me all wild up. You see, the, the devil tried to set Jesus up, but Jesus hit him with the word of God. You should not tempt the Lord your God. And some of you are tempting God, people of God. And also, if you're sick, stay home. If you're sick, if you feel, see the sun symptoms, even slightly, stay home. Even if you're coughing too hard, stay home. I'm not playing with you. We don't know. Until you get tested, stay home. We pray, there's nothing. 
But if you're sweating out, <laughs> and you're coughing out, <laughs> and you're adding more pepper, and more salt, <laughs> stay home. We'll, we'll buy some food sent for you. Stay home. We hook you up on Facebook. Stay home. We connect you to Zoom. Stay home. Wisdom people have gone. Please don't roll up. I just believe God. Believe God you should stay home. And stop tempting the Lord. And walking into danger. And putting other people in danger. Cut it out. How did Jesus combat the plan of the enemy? The word of God. What is written. You see, if you find a better way to fight the devil, people of God, you should teach Jesus. And I'm, uh, listen, I love the Pentecostal church. I'm Pentecostal through and through. I may not be as charismatic as some would have me to be. But by God, we need to stop Elevating our gimmicks above the word of God. I already tell you, I already tell you, nobody's pushing this brother down. Nobody. I don't care how anointed you are, you're not pushing me down. If I go down, trust me, it's God Himself. Push me. Push me down. This rubbish, we want to be super spiritual and we're bringing people through this emotional high and no changed. They were bitter standing up, they were bitter going down and they were bitter coming up. Take their seat in the church and see how bitter they are. This is my seat. Really? And you were just slain? Yeah, because they're slain but not killed. Self must be slain and killed. Pride must be killed. You're going to die daily, people of God. You're gonna, every, you're going to die. Because the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life are always groping upon you. I don't care how anointed you are. You're going to see somebody. Oh, yeah, you guys don't want me to go there. But you need to know that you are a child of God. So even though my eyes see, it doesn't mean I need to go there. Because there's water, it doesn't mean I have to drink. Even if though I'm thirsty, it's salt water anyway. It's just going to make me more thirsty. But you see, we don't, we don't want sound preaching. We don't want sound teaching. We want gimmicks and gizmos. And have a good time in the house of God. And go back home where the devil is beating us like crazy. Yeah. Every little skirt you're frightened. What's wrong with you? Every little muscle. You <laughs> <laughs> they have a nice car. You want a nice car too. And your credit is 300. <laughs> I'm, trying to be, I'm trying to be generous. Lust of the eyes. You want, you just red eye. No self control. Wait your turn. Wait your turn. And you, you see, you see them dressing nice and driving nice. You don't know how they got it. The sacrifice they made. How much, how much overtime they did. And now they're enjoying what God blessed them with. Go through the process. Wait your turn. Jesus, oh God. But again, people of God, if you find a better way to fight the devil, you should teach Jesus. And afterward, teach me. But until you do, I'm going to follow what the Bible says. We have elevated the ideas and sayings of people above the word of God. Jesus had the same problem when he came to the earth. And that's why they missed who he was. Because they already knew it. And let me put you on one, Church of God. I'm going to disturb some of you as we go into this year and then I teach. And if I teach something that's wrong or false, throw it in the garbage. But by God, be willing to learn. Some of you know it all already. And I can't tell you anything. 
you're going to suffer the consequences. Be willing to learn. If you realize, in 2020, God set me straight on so much of his way. I had to unlearn some of the things I grew up on. It's not that they were wrong. It's just that I'm moving further on now. What, let's say it was good. I got saved under it. But it was rubbish. Yeah, God by his grace used the foolishness of preaching to save. But it doesn't mean we remain there. We can grow onto maturity. Oh, God of mercy. Help us, Pentecostals. You see, if you have a relationship with God that should stimulate communication with God, if not, you should check if you really are a Christian. Are you so stuck in your ways that not even God can teach you anything? Jesus started where Adam left off, cast out of the garden into a dry place. Notice now, Jesus replaced Adam, and whoever comes to Jesus, he will in no wise cast out. He comes now as a new representative. So this year, as we face this 2021, you see, Jesus made it possible for us to start over and to start strong. I'm calling men, first of all. Don't back up, don't back down, and don't back out, men. I want to rally the troops this year. But you can't do this in your own strength or power. It has to be by the spirit of God. Men, I'm calling you to take the lead. To lead your homes, to lead your family, to lead the church. Get into reading the word of God. Get into praying. Get into Bible study. Show up for worship service. And even if you can't show up in person, show up online. I want to see you log in for Bible studies. You need to learn and grow. We need to blaze a trail this year and create new roads. We ought to shut the enemy. When he thought we were done for, we're just coming into, our, into where God has called us to. You must be the point man for the family and for the church. Build your life with the bricks of righteousness and on the foundation of truth. This cannot happen without a commitment to the word of God. If Jesus himself, who is God, depended on the word of God to combat the enemy, why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? I sense a storm is coming. I really do. I'm not trying to be prophetic or sound spiritual, but I really sense a storm is coming to hit the church. Some of you are raving about your roofs, but it's leaking. You won't know until it starts raining. You must be ready. Locked and loaded men with all 66 cannons, all 66 of them, locked and loaded, ready to fight. It is not time to be empty, running and empty and running on fumes. It's time to be filled with the Spirit of God. As a matter of fact, that's going to be our theme for this year. We're going to go back to preaching in Acts for the church to be filled with the Spirit of God. Not to be filled with gimmicks and this and this. Spirit led without the word of God. The spirit of God works in conjunction with the word of God. And those of you know me, if I see you acting crazy, I will tell you to sit down. I don't play. No, I don't play. Because this thing, this operating in our churches, the spirit led this. And spirit. No, the word first. If the word is contrary to the spirit, somebody is wrong. So let me put you on one. This year is the year to be filled with the Spirit of God. But it must be by the Word of God. Pastor Daly can't fill you. If, if God don't fill you, no one can. A storm is coming, so we must be locked, ready, and loaded. There's much unknown heading into this year. But I know who is in control. Let me close with this part of this poem from Minnie Haskins. She writes, I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. Let me say it, read it again so you get it. I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. 
And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand in the hand of God. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. I honestly don't need to know what's going to happen next month. Really, I don't. I don't. God don't need to reveal it to me. He don't need to open the heavens to me and tell me, Pastor Dale. No, he won't call me Pastor Dale anyway. I don't, really. I don't. I don't. Because if he knows, I don't have to know. It would be nice to know. Don't get me wrong. It would be nice to know. But we ought to understand, people of God, who our God is. We ought to start living the God we proclaim. We sing that he has the whole world in his hands. We must understand he have our lives in his hands. So as you start this year, I want to commission you to start. To start strong. Reset the button. Press the reset button. God, fill me with your spirit. Anoint me with your power. Give me knowledge and, and wisdom and understanding, oh God. To discern your will. To walk in your ways. That whatever happens, good or bad, you get the glory. Would you stand to your feet all over this house? Let us start strong. Let us start with the confidence that God gives let us rest our lives in the hands of God. Let us wise up people of God. The enemy has and will attack us with the lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes and the pride of life. None of us is off limits. None of us. I don't care how preacher you are, how pastor you are, how bishop you are. None of us. Some, some of us have been wounded last year. And when he comes in and presents you, whether it's a picture on a screen or a text or whatever you listen to, and it gratifies the flesh for just one moment, and then afterwards the shame comes rushing in. And then you don't come to church for two weeks. I wasn't feeling so well, so I just check it out on Zoom. Yeah. And then we try to cover it up. And we're struggling and we're fighting. And sadly, some, some churches present this place where you can just go pretend. No, no, I don't want to pretend. It's a hospital. People need to be healed. I want to let you know it's not over. I know what happened in 2020. It's not over. God kept you into 2021. 2021 is your restoration year. Is your overcoming year. The addictions that you had in 2020. This year of overcoming. The pornography addiction. The alcohol addiction. Whatever it is. The over-the-counter drugs addiction. The food addiction. Well, whatever your addiction is. This is a year of overcoming. Start strong, people of God. First thing, identify it. You'll be amazed how, see, know how many of us are fighting the same battle you're fighting. You, you'll be amazed. And as we talk about pornography, you th oh, that guy, you guys are dirty. Girls do the same thing too. Girls are addicted too. But it's a secret. And people who are single are having more sex than married people. Because they're trapped in this cycle. The setup of the enemy. But I'm calling you to fight. This is not a call to condemnation. No, 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 no. Because... There's no innocent person in here. Not even one. No, not one. No, not one. No, not one. But I want to start strong this year. And because I can't fight by myself, I need you to fight with me and I'm going to fight with you. I promise you this church, I'm going to fight for you this year. More than I fought for you in 2020. I'm going to fight for you. No, you're not going to fail. Not this year. Not under my watch. By the grace of God. By the help of God. You're going to be strong in God. Pressing the reset button.
Let us start strong. Let's identify the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life. Whatever avenue the enemy used to target you, identify them right now. Right, right now. Identify them right now. Whether it's coming through the phone, coming through the television, coming through the iPad or whatever. Identify them right now. The loss of the eyes. You're looking at what your neighbors have and you say, when is, why can't you? Yeah, loss of the eyes. You think you're better than anyone else. You know what's wrong with everybody else because you're filled with pride. However, you've been attacked. Stop right here. Identify it and surrender it to God. Let God know you want to start strong this year. Come on, let him know. Let him know. Could we pray? Could we pray? Let us pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies for sustaining us through last year, bringing us into this year, oh God. And with your help, God, this is going to be our year of recovery, oh God. Our year of restoration, oh God. Even though it may be a difficult year on the outside, the inner man must be renewed day by day, oh God. Father, if you allow hardship this year, it is going to be for our benefit. Father, if you allow difficulties this year, it is going to be for our benefit, oh God. Whatever the enemy sends away, God, you are going to use it and turn it around for good, oh God. So we stop right here to make confession to you, Lord God. You see the things that had taken us captive in 2020, oh Lord God. And they really want to follow us into this year. But God, we want to start strong. We want to start in the power of the Spirit of God. We don't want to start in denial, oh God, and, and making people think we're so strong, we're so good, we're so perfect, oh God. Father, we come to you making confession, oh God. You know the truth about us. But God, we want to be renewed by the Spirit of God. Anoint us this year. Hallelujah. God, anoint us this year with the power of the Holy Ghost. Anoint, anoint us this year with the power of the Spirit of God. Cause us to stand. Having done all to stand, O oh God. Armed for the battle, God. Armed for the fight, O oh God. Cause us to be resolute in our commitment to you, Lord God. By the Spirit of God. Give us a passion and a desire for your word. Direct us to your word. Cause us to read your word. Cause us to meditate upon your words. Cause us to speak your word, to believe your word, O oh God. And to combat the wiles of the enemy by the power of your word. The sword of the spirit. The word of God. Father, may we follow Jesus' example. He came, O oh God, to represent us. He came to represent us, O oh God. And he passed the test. Because he passed the test, God, now we can be victorious. We don't have to be slain by sin, oh God. Because, Father, you have given us the strength and the power to overcome. Bless us now is my prayer, oh God. Bless us now is our prayer, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me say this real quick. Let me say this real quick. We focus so much on the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and rightly so. And we miss one di dimension of Jesus that is just as essential. It is the life of Jesus. The life of Jesus. Jesus overcoming the three same sins that we overcome, he did it to represent us. So when we commit ourselves to God, he sees us just like Jesus passing all three tests. So not only is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus credited to us, his life also is credited to us. So that journey in the wilderness was for us, not for himself. See yourself victorious, people of God. See yourself overcoming that addiction, people of God. See yourself overcoming that setback, people of God. Because Jesus did it for you on your behalf. You are an overcomer. You are a child of God. So you are an overcomer. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.